What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here from Darium's Competitive Pokemon. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different here on Pokemon Trading Card Game Online. I'm going to be trying to do a deck profile on the internet. I'm going to be looking at Igor's top four Decidueye Nine Tails list from the North American International Championships. Now, a couple reasons I'm trying this. First of all, just want to try something new. See if you guys like the deck profiles. You prefer those be with real cards in real life here on the playmat, or would you prefer them to be online with all the pretty graphics? And I can do things like enlarge them and show you all the text, all that fancy schmancy stuff. Do you prefer that? Do you prefer the real cards? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I do not own a real Espeon EX. So, this is the second reason why we're doing this deck profile online. Just so, because I happen to have a nice, pretty full art. Espeon EX, check that out. Don't own one of these in real life yet. Apparently, they're only a couple bucks. Got one coming in the mail. Going to be getting that shortly. So, without further ado, let's check out this awesome list. I played against this a bunch of times at the International Championships. I played against this deck like three times. Super annoying. Very good deck. And it's just, I think, could be a great call headed into the World Championships. So, let's take a look at this list see what it's got going on, and talk about those deck choices that Igor made when constructing this list. Try to get in his mind and see what he was thinking when he went ahead and crafted this. You can see we play a 4-4-4 four, four, four Decidueye line. Obviously, Decidueye is here for that powerful Feather Arrow ability. Once during your turn before you attack, you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, this deck... This Decidueye Ninetales list. I was playing Decidueye Ninetales with Violet Plume earlier in the season, and I thought that deck was really good. This list here takes the idea of Decidueye's, Decidueye and Ninetales, kind of that, that sniping, just wanting to put damage everywhere on the opponent's side of the field, pick and choose what you knock out and when you knock it out, but it doesn't play Violet Plume. You'll notice there is no Violet Plume in this list. Instead, we play a lot more trainer cards, Right, if we take a look just at those. Oh, yeah, that doesn't do that. Anyways, we play a lot more trainer cards, right? And you can see uh, we play two copies of Field Blower. We play, um, you know, we get to play one Rescue Stretcher and a Revitalizer, three Level Ball. We get to play more Pokemon. We just have more room for more stuff, right? Because we don't play Vile Plume. We could fit these Tapu Cocos in here, the Espeon, and. Uh, there's just, oh, and the choice bands. That's, that's the big thing. We got room for two choice band here because we don't play that vile plume. Now I still think vile plume is really good. You know, obviously just being able to get the turn one vile plume, burn through your deck, shut off your opponent's items. Awesome card, but you don't have to play the vile plume to be successful as Igor was able to show. Decidueye's feather arrow here combines super well with Tapu Coco's flying flip. This attack does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon just for a double colorless energy. On top of that, this thing's got free retreat. Super sweet and a fat 110 hit points. So just a great starter. Get it out there early. Start flying flip. Put 20 damage everywhere while you set up Decidueye. Talk about you know the Gardevoir matchup. And everybody's talking about Guardi, right? From Burning Shadows. Super exciting card. This deck destroys your routes, okay? If you have any hope of keeping a Ralts alive or anything like that, this deck will totally run them off the board before they have any chance of smelling becoming a Gardevoir, right? So Tapu Coco's Flying Flip, super great for that. Vulpix is in here. Play two copies of Vulpix. Super great for that beacon attack. It's free. It's a free attack. You don't have to pay any energy for it. Fantastic. So you can retreat into this thing on the first turn of the game. Maybe you put a Grass Energy on your Decidueye. You're thinking later you're probably going to be powering up that powerful Razor Leaf attack, or maybe you'll Hollow Hunt later. Maybe you slap a DCE onto you know a Tapu Lele or your Decidueye, and you can just go in early with the turn one beacon and search your deck for two Pokemon, reveal them, put them into your hand. You know what this is great for? Getting your Dartrix, getting your Decidueyes, getting your Ninetales GX, if you're one of out of the deck so that you can evolve this Vulpix on the next turn. It's just super amazing for setting up your hand. Even if your opponent ends you away, you can still uh, you still get a fresh new hand to six, which is nothing to scoff at. Also, I've used Beacon uh, more times than I could count to get a Shaman for setup on the following turn. Maybe my hand is dead. Maybe I got nothing else going on. Sometimes I'll just Beacon for a Shaman or Tapu Lele 
just to refresh my hand, I got something else, I can then draw the following turn if I happen to be sitting on a dead hand. So Vulpix, just amazing in Decidueye decks. I've been playing Vulpix in Decidueye decks and the other Vileplume list I was, and the other Decidueye list I was playing and just does wonders here as well. We got Nine Tails GX, awesome with that Ice Blade attack. This attack does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. You get to pick. It's amazing. You snipe 50. Meanwhile, you're feather arrowing things. That really adds up quick. Just being able to put damage wherever you want on your opponent's side of the board. And then Nine Tails is also a tank because it's got this Ice, ice Path GX attack. It allows you to move all the damage counters from this Pokemon onto your opponent's active Pokemon. Really great, amazing GX attack to have. Also, just for that same double colorless energy cost, and just drives really well with this deck, really well with the DCE, and it's just an awesome, awesome attack to have because it slows your opponent down. They can't hit into this thing, or else they're just going to get ice pathed right back. And then it gives you more time to pile on feather arrows onto your opponent's side of the field. It just really, really sweetens this deck up. Ninetales and Decidueye have a lot of synergy together. Obviously, our draw Pokemon, haven't got to those yet. We do play the two Shame and the X, which just allows you to set up and draw through your deck, get out as many Decidueye as you can on the first turn of the game, as well as one Tapu Lele uh, GX. This is this is good. This is sufficient. Really wouldn't play any less than the two Shaman and the one Lele. If you look at John Kettler's second place list, he was playing two Lele and two Shaman. This is about as low as you could go safely while being able to still draw through your deck consistently. Tapu Lele also should be noted is a very good attacker in this deck. And you got Choice Band as well. Energy Drive can quickly stack up and add up to big one-hit knockouts when combined with Feather Arrow. Very easy just to slap a double colorless energy on Tapu Lele, slap another double colorless energy on the following turn. Now all of a sudden you've got a four energy attacker with Choice Band, Feather Arrow, you're hitting some pretty high numbers with that one Tapu Lele. So really, really useful. Play two copies of Field Blower. Field Blower is great for removing your opponent's uh, maybe Fighting Fury Belts, also great for removing tools from that pesky ability Garbodor with that Garbotoxin ability, which pretty much shuts the whole deck down. Uh, that being said, there are some options that for you to deal with Garbodor as well. Say you get, you know, uh, say you're able to get 70 damage onto a Garbodor, you can also devolve it. This is another big strategy of this deck. We have this Miraculous Shrine attack, which we can... A use for one colorless, devolve each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon, put the highest stage evolution card into your opponent's hand. You might say, that sounds kind of silly, you know, what's the point of doing that? It goes into your opponent's hand, aren't they just going to put it right back down the following turn? But, if you think about, what if I'm playing against Metagross, right? Metagross has 250 hit points. That's so many. But, if you are able to devolve your opponent's Metagross, then all you have to do is be able to, to knock out a Metang right? Which is awesome. So, so long as your Metagross has enough damage on it that a Metang will get knocked out, you use Miraculous Shrine, bring those up, and then all of a sudden all your opponent's Metangs get knocked out and you're able to scoop up the prizes. Now, if you're able to uh, cra craft some sort of play where you have damage spread all over your opponent's field, and then Miraculous Shrine, so you can win the whole game in one Miraculous Shrine, take multiple prizes in one turn. It's crazy stuff. Uh, I was playing Mega Gardevoir, or not Mega Gardevoir, Gardevoir GX against this deck. Uh, since Gardevoir GX is kind of the new deck that I've been testing out for Burning Shadows to see how that deck plays, you know, for Worlds coming up here next month. And just Espeon GX's Miraculous, Miraculous Shrine attack combined with Tapu Koko and Ninetales GX is just way too much to keep up with. I mean, just being able to devolve those 230 hit point GXs and just leave your opponent's board with just 80 hit point uh, Curlias, they get knocked out very easily. So that's kind of the strategy of this deck. Field Blower, uh, like I said, I was talking about Field Blower a little bit earlier. Good for removing those Fighting Fury Belts. Good for removing tools from Garbodor. Gotta play at least two. You can Hollow Hunt them back in case you need to play more. Level Ball, we play three of those, just allows you to kind of burn early, set up those dart tricks, get those Rallets into play, along with Forest of Giant Plants, which is kind of the whole backbone of this deck. The whole deck works because Forest of Giant Plants exists. Now, next format, Forest of Giant Plants is going to be rotating. 
So decidueye decks are going to be taking a big hit. In fact, I'm going to be doing a video on that, kind of what rotation has effect on certain archetypes. And this is one of the ones that takes a big hit from uh, rotation. This forced giant plants goes away, and obviously this deck's just not quite as fast without it. So will decidueye be able to remain with just rare candies? We'll see. But it's definitely not going to be as good as it is now. Level Ball allows you to burn through your deck with Forced Giant Plants and get those Rala and Dartrix into play as quickly as possible. Now you'll see we do play a split here. One Rescue Stretcher, one Revitalizer. Revitalizer is great for uh, getting those Decidueyes back, getting those Dartrixes back, and evolving them. But Rescue Stretcher is awesome. You can shuffle three Pokemon back into your deck. Say you want to lay lay back in the deck. Maybe you want to get Espeon back. Maybe you want to get Ninetales back. We play one Rescue Stretcher because of all these one-ofs that we play. Look, we play one Tapu Lele, one Espeon, one Ninetales. We can't get those back with the Revitalizer, but we want the opportunity to get them back because they're so powerful and can make such a big difference in our game that we need to play one copy of Rescue Stretcher. Four Trainers Mail is just awesome for drawing and burning through the deck as quickly as possible, just getting your level balls, getting your force out, getting Revitalizer. It's just great. gives you that flexibility. You don't really care too much about Garbodor. Garbodor is not a great matchup, but you can beat Garbodor if you could just get out as many Decidueye as you can as early as possible. Maybe devolve your opponent's Garbodor, leaving the Trubbish there with 70 hit points. If you can knock those out, you're going to be in the clear and good to go. So you don't really mind burning through your deck too much. Uh, you, you just play those Trainer's Mails, which a lot of decks don't do nowadays. Also, Trainer's Mail is rotating as well. should mention that just because... This is kind of the last hurrah for Trainer's Mail is the World Championships. We do play the 4 Ultra Ball. That's just kind of your vanilla consistency. You want to be able to draw your cards. You want to be able to Ultra Ball for Shaman, Tapu Lele to get set up. You want to be able to grab those Decidueyes, the Nine Tails. It just gets everything in your deck. Got to play four of them. 2 Lysander. Uh, Lysander is going to be replaced with Guzma next format. And Lysander is just that game winning card. Brings up uh, whatever you want on your opponent's side of the field. Also great for Decidueye if you can trap something active. That's kind of a main strategy of this deck. It's easier to pull off if you're playing the Vile Plume version because maybe your opponent can't put a Float Stone on a heavy Pokemon on the bench, something like that. It's much easier to trap something active with the Vile Plume version, but this version can get it done as well with Field Blower, Lysander. Sometimes you can get a lucky turn or two where your opponent can't retreat the Pokemon that you bring up, allowing you to have more turns to snipe the bench with your Ice Blade, your Flying Flip, and your Feather Arrow. Play three copies of N and four Sycamore just to draw cards. You'll notice we don't play any copies of Versus Seeker in here, though, which was normal for the Violet Plume version of this deck, but for the Tapu Coco version with no Violet Plume to also play no Versus Seeker, that's pretty groundbreaking stuff. Uh, John Roberts was also able to finish in the top 32 of the North American International Championships with a uh, Tapu Bulu Vika Volt deck that also played no Versus Seeker. So there was a couple decks that did well without Versus Seeker at the International Championships. Makes me really set excited for what the next format is going to be like without any Versus Seeker at all. Obviously, this deck did well without it, and I think what we will find is that it's more of a crutch than anything, and not every deck needs Versus Seeker. And, uh, you know, the format is definitely going to evolve and get more interesting now that it's gone. Play two copies of Choice Band. Just awesome to put on your Nine Tails, be able to Ice Blade for 80. Also great for Tapu Lele. Sky returning for 60. Nothing to scoff at, right? So sometimes you just need to get that Shaman out of there. It's a big liability on your opponent's side of the field. You can attach Choice Band to Shaman, Sky return for 60. In combination with Feather Arrow, that can add up to quite a bit. Plus, you get to keep your Choice Band in case you want to attach it to anybody else later on. And, of course, putting that Choice Band, slapping it on Decidueye, is just great for hitting 120 base with Razor Leaf. Really, really strong. Adds up quickly with all the Feather Arrows. Played two copies of Floatstone. I know some lists were playing three, uh, but two copies of Floatstone is sufficient just for being able to give your deck some mobility. Obviously, Tapu Coco's got Free Retreat, which is just downright awesome. But not everybody does. Floatstone is going to be your tool of choice for many of your Pokemon, especially Decidueye. If you need to wall for a turn, maybe just take a hit, retreat Decidueye, attack with somebody else. It's also great on your Ninetales, just so Ninetales can take a hit, 
retreat attack with a more powerful attacker. Also goes great on Espeon, so Espeon can use that Miraculous Shrine, devolve all your punch Pokemon, then get out of there for free. And then, of course, our energy. We just got the three grass energy. John Kettler played four, but three is sufficient. I played three all season when I played a version of Decidueye, and three is fine. Three is the minimum, though. Wouldn't go any lower than that. And you got your four copies of Double Colorless, because this whole deck runs on DCE. All right, y'all, let me know what you think. Did you like the online deck tech, deck profile? Let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you all for checking us out. Peace.